guys, it's Gregory. Fab to see you as always with another episode of Boy Meets Beauty to answer all of your beauty questions. Um, so it's been like I've like I've told you, it's been a little crazy. So don't be surprised if over the next couple weeks I have to like skip a week. It may get to like an every other week thing. I know, I'm sorry, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. So bear with me if I skip a week. It'll be that much more exciting when the new video comes out. And then you'll have like a gajillion questions and we'll be really happy to see each other. But then again, we're always happy to see each other. Anyway, so today's video, since you guys have always got like a gajillion fabulous questions online um, <laughs> that I'm slowly catching up with, uh, a lot of you had some similar ones. I'm, I'm sitting here looking at my cheat sheet my notes. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and answer those that I saw a few of you had because they're really, really good questions. And I like to answer them in person with you. So <clears throat> let's go. Um, Yanelli was asking me and a couple of others have asked this as well. At what age do I start to use retinol? Well, here's the scoop. In regards to anti-aging for retinol use, you would start to use retinol when you actually see the signs of aging. So when you start to see like little tiny crow's feet, um, you would start to use a retinol to smooth out that appearance. But you can use retinol for other things. Like retinol is fabulous for minimizing the appearance of pores because it works on like the, the collagen in the pore wall to make it Kind of stand back up again and also a lot of doctors um like to prescribe retinol for acne i'm a little bit more of a traditionalist i like you know salicylic and sulfur for acne but those are two two examples of when you could use retinol as like a younger skin because obviously a lot of times um younger people are plagued with acne well of all ages i should say but that can start out a little bit younger so there's really no specific age it depends on what the use is so voila good question uh the next one this is like Mm. This is like a red flag ingredient thing, and it had to do with alcohol in products, namely that Clinique toner. And Candy and Eleanor were asking, like, what's the scoop? Is it bad for you? Is it not? Like, does it dry your skin out? Okay, well, there's different types of alcohol. Um, fatty alcohols, like subtle alcohol, sterile alcohol, those actually don't dry the skin. They're used as, like, emulsifiers and such in cosmetic preparations, whereas the SD, SD alcohol and denatured alcohol are the ones that usually get like, dog, oh, use it because it's drying on your skin. Well, here's what a lot of times that does, is it delivers that product and then flash dries onto your skin and causes like evaporating. It can kind of degrease the skin. For that reason, yes, using too much of any products with alcohol in it can cause drying on your skin. And that's why you'll see a lot of times that the alcohol, <clears throat> that the products with alcohol are more for an oily skin because you can get that degreasing benefit. Um, it would also help to kind of like dry out blemishes if you're, you know, breakout prone. Now, the way I use it, that's why I only use that toner once a day versus twice, and I usually use it, you know, two, three times a week and not every night. So what you want to do is just make sure you're being skincare smart and not overdoing it on your skin and making sure that you're using products to balance out the moisturizing aspects. I am sure the argument over this will continue until the cows come home, and um, I may actually even do a full follow-up video on it. I've called into my sources, and I'm getting deep scoop on it, so stay tuned. Next, um, Abigail was asking, what do I think of MLL, M blah, 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 MLM products? Now, if you aren't familiar with what that means, that's multi-level marketing products. That's something like um, Arbonne, or you've got, you know, Nerium. Now, here's the scoop. I know a lot of people who love those products. I know people who sell those products and they adore it and it really, really works well for it, you know? And I know people who have done really, really well, you know, selling them. As a professional who practices professional skincare services and sells product in my studio, I personally would not put them in my studio because they're not a specifically professional product. And, um, those products aren't really developed for resale because it's developed to kind of get on board to purchase the pro, you know? So there's all sorts of different arguments. So I personally, like, not my thing, but that's just me. Um, I know a lot of people who really love and use them. Again, I don't really typically recommend them to a lot of people, but that's also because I don't use them. I've tried a couple of them before, weren't my thing, like I said. So that's kind of the scoop. I think it's a personal choice, but hey, if you tried that product and you love it, 
go for it, you know? So I think you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but I would be surprised to kind of see that in a professional setting because estheticians are super picky about that stuff. Um, the next one, Vocal Mommy and Liz, am I reading this right? I think so, yes. Um, were asking me if I had tried Paula's Choice. Now, uh, let me tell you, one of the first books that I used to read was Paula McGowan's Don't Go to the Cosmetics Counter Without Me, and I would like, choo, 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 through everything, and then I would like cry, cry, cry when she trashed all of my favorite skincare brands. Paula McGowan is incredibly knowledgeable about everything in skincare. She has a lot of opinions on it, and she has some great information if you're looking to learn more about ingredients and how they work. And I know that she is incredibly stringent um, about her formulation of her products, and they're made with a lot of integrity. I have sampled a few, but I'm going to maybe look into it more. It's tricky because I'm testing product down for the studio and then other things for you guys, but I will promise I will look into it. But I know a lot of people who actually like them, and they have a very good reputation. Sometimes Paula and I don't agree on certain things, but then again, no one's going to agree on everything everything but I think that um her products have a good enough reputation to say give it a shot and I know that it's a great resource for learning so check it out um Celine was asking is a spin brush the same as a Clarisonic no the Clarisonic is a sonic technology so it like oscillates this is this is my sign language for oscillates um if you actually can go online and search the uh the strobe light demo for the Clarisonic brush you can see how the oscillation works whereas a spin brush is just going to do this and it's probably going to be a little bit rougher so not the same technology the sonic technology actually coaxes out the dirt out of the pores and gives a deeper cleansing where the spin brush is just going to kind of exfoliate and move um you know the cleanser over the skin and probably deep clean deeper than hands but different than clarisonic and with that said no i have not tried the foreo luna yet i want to um i just haven't gotten to it i want to reach out to them and see what the scoop is maybe they'll give me one i don't know um but we'll see so these were a few of your common questions that y'all had so i hope that helps in answering them and of course keep it coming um I love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Gregor's LA on Instagram, Twitter, and Gregory Dillon on Snapchat and Pinterest. I've been a little lazy with it, but I promise to bump up my social media so we can all be in touch as I love talking to you guys. Anyway, you are awesome. I love y'all and keep it beautiful.